Hi there. In this video, we are going to discuss about stage one. That means our emphasis would be on requirement gathering to migrate to Power BI. As you can see on the screenshot in front of you or on your screen, we have different stages when we have to migrate to Power BI. So this is a complete plan. And right now we are on stage one. In our last video, we discussed how you can prepare to migrate to Power BI. That means pre-migration steps. And in this video, we are going to emphasize on gather requirements and prioritizing. Over here, we basically have three different sections. As you can see on your screen, the very first would be compile requirements, which further has two more sections, which we are going to discuss in a while. Then we are going to discuss identify improvement opportunities. That means if you can improve your migration process, then how you can do that. And at last, we are also going to discuss about prioritizing and assess complexities. So let's get started over here. As I mentioned, the very first step is compile requirements. In the last video, we already discussed about inventory of existing BI items in the pre-migration steps. That becomes the input of the requirements for the new solution to be created in Power BI. Collecting requirements is about understanding the current state as well as what items user would like to change or refactored when reports are redesigned in Power BI. So over here, we are gonna go through the two different process. That means first gather report requirements and then secondly, we are going to discuss about gather data requirements. So let's talk about the very first. In the very first, it comes gather report requirements. Over here, we have certain steps. That means we have to go through a number of steps. For example, the very first comes purpose, audience and expected action. In this one, we have to identify the purpose and business process applicable to each report. Second comes how consumers use the report. Over there, you have to consider with the report consumers of the existing report to understand exactly what they do with it. Next comes the owner and subject matter expert. Here you have to identify the report owner and any subject matter expert associated with the report or data domain while you are trying to migrate to Power BI. Next comes content delivery method. Over here, Whenever we are trying to migrate to Power BI, we have to clarify report consumer expectations for content delivery. Next, interactivity needs. Over there, we should also consider or determine must have and nice to have interactivity requirements such as filters, drill down actions or drill through actions. Next comes the data sources, which is going to ensure all the data sources required by the reports that are discovered and data latency needs. Over here, we can also identify historical data, trending and data snapshot requirements for each report so they can be aligned with the data requirements. Next is security requirements, which is most important part of it. Over here, when we are planning to migrate from our legacy system to Power BI, we should clarify security requirements such as allowed viewers, allowed editors, and role level security needs. Next comes calculations, KPIs, and business rules, where we need to identify and document all the calculations, KPIs, and business rules that are currently defined within the existing report so they can be aligned with the data requirements. Next comes the usability, layout, and cosmetic requirements. In this part, we have to identify specific usability, layout, and cosmetic needs related to data visualization, grouping, and sorting requirements, and conditional visibility. This may include any specific consideration related to mobile device delivery as well. Next, we have to also think about printing and exporting needs, whether you want to export the report into PDF, PowerPoint, or you may want to print it on A4 size paper. So all these have to be considered over here. Second last would be your risk or concerns, where we have to determine 
whether there are other technical or functional requirements for the reports, as well as any risk or concerns regarding the information being presented in them. Lastly, we have to also think about open issues and backlog items in our existing legacy system, where we have to identify any future maintenance, non-issues, or deferred requests to add to the backlog at this time. Next, we are going to discuss about gather data requirements. In this section, we have the different steps, for example, existing queries, type of data sources, data structure and cleaning needs, data integration, acceptable data latency, data volume and scalability, measures, KPI and business rules, master data and data catalog, security and data privacy, open issues and backlog items. So you must consider all these different points while gather data requirements because these are going to be very important and specifically emphasize on security and data privacy and data integration part where you need to identify different sources and how you can protect your data for the reports in Power BI. Over here, there's one very important point. That means data reusability can be achieved with shared data sets which can optionally be certified to indicate trustworthiness and improve discoverability. Data preparation reusability can be achieved with data flows or data sets to reduce repetitive logic in multiple data sets in Power BI. Data flows can also significantly reduce to the load on source system because the data is retrieved less often. Multiple data sets can then import data from the data flow as well. Next, we are going to discuss about identify improvement opportunities. In most situations, whenever you are working on this stage, that is stage first, when you are going to gather requirements, some modifications and improvement occur. It's rare that a direct one-to-one -one migration occurs without any refactoring or enhancement. So there are three types of improvements you may consider while working on your gather requirements. The very first would be consolidation of reports. You can consolidate similar kinds of reports where you have different techniques such as filters, bookmarks, or personalization. Second would be efficiency improvement. During requirements gathering, improvements can often be identified. For instance, when analysts compile numbers manually or when a workflow can be streamlined. In this case, Power Query can play a large role in replacing manual activities that are currently performed and you can automate all those steps during the ETL process in the Power Query itself. Lastly is the centralization of data model. An authoritative and centralized data set serves as the backbone for managed self-service BI. Lastly, we are going to discuss about prioritize and assess complexity. At this point, the initial inventory is available and may include specific requirements. When you are going to prioritize the initial set of BI items ready for migration, reports and data should be considered collectively as well as independently for each other. So there, you have to first identify high priority reports, which can include bringing significant value to the business, or are expected frequently or are required by senior leadership or executives or involve a reasonable level of complexity. So these are the couple of things that you should consider while identifying high priority reports. Second point would be identify high priority data, which may include data that contains critical data elements or is common organizational data that serves many use cases or may be used to create a shared data set for reuse by reports and many reports authors. And lastly, that data can involve a reasonable level of complexity to improve the chances of success when in the initial migration iterations. Now, what's next? In the next video, we are gonna discuss about stage two. That means plan deployment. The output of this stage 2 includes as many specific decisions as possible to guide the deployment process. If you have any question and concern, please don't forget to connect with us and your feedback is always welcome. We always consider your feedback and try to improve ourselves. If you are over here for the very first time, please don't forget to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon. 
for all the latest videos and updates. See you in the next video.